Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to this webcast regarding the introduction of the platform version 2023. So last year we introduced platform version 2022 and one of the major changes in that platform was the UI UX environment. So we switched everything from our traditional menu driven application to more stylish ribbons looking like look and feel. We have organized all of our menus into ribbons and made it easier for the user to access functionality. We also added things like the insert center. We added a lot of benefits in terms of usability. So that was already a big change from version 2.9 into, into version 2022. And now with the August timeframe coming up, we're ready to release version 2023. If you have not done so, you still have access to the beta version. And please go ahead and download the beta version so that way you can kick the tires and test the version and give us your initial feedback. And in this session, I would like to give you a brief overview of the news and the functions and features coming into platform version 22, uh, 2023. These features include, amongst others, an enhancement support of international engineering standard, a better navigation, better search and display through the insert center, and an increased 3D rendering speed. So let's, without any further ado, let's get started and take a look at what these new features have to offer. First, let's start off with the backstage. So in the backstage environment, all of your project <laughs> related features are available, including open project, all of your project management functionality. And one of the aspects that was missing was the ability to visualize the properties of the projects. So now in the backstage view, if you click on a particular project, you will have the ability to visualize those properties associated to the project. And additionally, we've got these project pins available as well. So if there are certain projects that you open on a daily basis and you always want these projects to be on top, simply pin the project and it'll be there every single time you open up ePlan. So let's jump into the software and take a look at that. Here in the menu file under projects, you can open your projects and here based on the project you select, you can see a preview of certain properties of the project. So you don't have to open the project to view the properties. You can simply highlight the project and visualize the properties. And in addition, projects that you open often, you can simply click on this pin button and it'll automatically pin the project up on top and will make it always accessible to the user. Next, let's take a look at the new database engine. So in version 2022, we introduced the new parts management. So the new parts management, we got rid of access or the access drivers and the access engine used for the parts management. Since access is really more of a hobby database than a professional database, we decided to make sure that all of our database engines in the software are also up to date. And there were two more to be changed. One was the project management database. The other one was the translate database. So now we've replaced the project management database with an internal ePlan format. And we also did the same for our translate database. Now, what does that mean in terms of transitioning from one to the other? Well, if you look at the translation database, all you have to do is in the previous version, so version 2022, you can export your current text or translation database. And then once you open up version 2023, you simply import that exported file and all of your translations are then available. In terms of the project management database, all you have to do is simply reload the data. As you probably know, if you go and set up a project management database, first you have to read the files and folders that you want to incorporate in that project management database. Then in this case, all you have to do is open up version 2023, start the new project management database and just simply reload the data and the system will update all of the information. 
So again, a much better integration of the ePlan platform into existing IT landscapes because there are no need for additional access drivers or external access functionality to run the ePlan database functionality. So in ePlan itself, if we now go to our settings environment, you will find that under the user settings, under management, and under management, you will have your project management database. And here you can see you can still use SQL server as a database or now the internal ePlan database. And that will replace your current access database. In the translation environment, it's the same thing. Here we have the option for the dictionary. And under the dictionary, you can choose either an SQL server or the ePlan database to manage your translations. All of that is now new in version 2023. Version 2023 provides a new Excel interface. So this means that there is no more Excel installation that is required. We have a much better support for other office applications since we don't need the native Excel application to create the Excel files and it provides a much better speed. So before, when you had ePlan version 2.9 or 2022, you needed an instance of Excel or Excel had to be installed on your computer. Why? Because we would actually access that Excel particular functionality to create the Excel files. Now we are using a new library to allow us to generate those Excel files without having Excel installed. So this means that if you use OpenOffice or LibreOffice or Google Sheets, for example, we can generate native Excel files out of the platform without having Excel installed. So it completely integrates into existing Office applications. So if we go into ePlan, again, any type of export that you want to do, if I select, for example, here my first two pages or first two sections, I go to file, export. Now I'd like to go to my manufacturing data labeling. In this particular labeling environment, I'm gonna select a device tag list. I'm gonna export this to an XLSX, and then I'm going to export and start the application. So now what you're gonna see is the system just launching the Excel immediately and creating that Excel file for you. So there you have it a new Excel interface to export data into an Excel file without having Excel installed on your computer, giving more flexibility of integration into existing office environments. Then we have a new capability for placeholder technology. So placeholder technology helps you to manage data assign data to value sets and easily transfer those data sets to your objects, whether it's through macros, whether it's on a page, whether it's in a project. Now we have the ability to change the ePlan macro or the ePlan QR codes. And these QR codes contain the information associated to websites, to web links, to part numbers, to anything you want. And now we can change these QR codes on the fly using the placeholder technology. So it makes it much easier and quicker to manage your QR code and to display and change them. So let's go and check this out. Here we've got a page, I've got a QR code. If we take a look at this QR code in detail, we can see I have a value for my QR code, which is the website. It's assigned to my Lock property, which is going to be displayed. And here I've got value for ePlan website, for the Rockwell website, or the Siemens website. So now, by using my placeholder, I can simply assign a value set. I can select, for example, ePlan, confirm with OK, and you can see the QR code just changed. Right click on the placeholder, assign a new value, change it to Rockwell, and here you can see the new QR code has changed. So there you have it. Using the placeholder technology, you can easily change your QR codes. Next is the international macros management. 
if we look at the electrical design worldwide, depending on which country you supply or which country you work in, you will encounter various different global or local standards. In North America, you have the CSA for Canada, you have the ANSI, NEMA, IEEE, UL, NFPA for North America. In South America, you'll find some NEMA, UL, or also IEC standard requirements. Most of Europe, Africa, Middle East, and Southern Asia is IEC compliant. And in Russia, you'll find the GOS standard, and in China, the GB and Japan, the GIS. So these are kind of the predominant standards available worldwide. And from an electrical design perspective, when you complying to those specific standards, you have also different design requirements. So if we take the example of this power supply, this 24 volt DC power supply, well, if I look at the representation of this DC power supply in IEC, it's a, I would say, vertical orientation. The power comes in from the top and goes off at the bottom to distribute 24 volts. If we look into North America standards, you have the inch variant of that same part. Now, that part is rotated by 90 degrees, is mirrored, and is scaled. And you have the power coming in now from the left, based off of a half an inch grid, and the power or the 24 volt going off to the right. And if you work for specific corporations, whether it's large corporations or other corporations, they might have their own standard. And the representation of that same part might be, again, completely different. So here you have the L1 and L2 coming from the top, and then you have the 24 volt DC going out left and right and going towards the bottom. So different way of representing the same part number. In the version 2023, we now have the option to store all of these macros for one single part. So how does this work? So let's go ahead and take a look at our IEC project here. So I've got an IEC project, I've got a schematics, now let's go and look for the part. I've got it stored as a favorite. I can select this power supply and by a simple drag and drop, now I have that power supply associated, attached to the cursor. I can choose the size and I can drop it down. Let's now go to my North American project in inch. I have here a North American standard project, two ladders, 40 rows, I've got a half an inch between each row and based off of ANSI and FPA standard. Now I can select the same device, simply drag it into my drawing, and here you can see it now matches perfectly on a half an inch grid and is oriented exactly the way that the customer expects it to be. Now we have another variant of the NFPA based off of a millimeter grid. So if you want to work off of a millimeter grid, you can also have, instead of half an inch, have eight millimeters between each rows, and you can support more of a millimeter environment. And for that as well, we can select that same part, drag it and drop it into the drawings, and you can see here the connection points are based off of an eight millimeter grid. So again, three different macros for three different environments, all stored behind the same part number. And finally, if I look at my corporate standards, in my corporate standards, I have a requirement for a power supply as well. I will take this part number, drag it into this environment here. And as you can see, the layout and the representation is different and it shows that power supply according to the company standards. So how does that work in the parts management and how are those macros stored? Let's go to the ePlan parts management. Let's navigate to that part number. Go to my overview. There is my voltage power supply. So we've got a schematics field, which is the current one that you're familiar with, where you can store a macro associated with the schematics. However, if we now move to the properties and we select our macro layout, we now have additional fields, not just the schematic macro field, but we have a GB macro field, a GOST, an IEC, an inch NFPA, and a millimeter NFPA version. And also we have our corporate standards. And here, if I click on these three dots, I have access to up to 10 different corporate standards. 
in these corporate standards, I can put a code of my choosing and I can put a location specific to that corporate standard. So now the user can manage multiple different macros for the same part for different environments. And now if he selects that macro, he can easily drag and drop it into his project and use it. But how does the system know which macro to use? For example, it picked this correct macro for this one, it picked the correct macro for this one. Now, if we look at the settings of the project, the settings of the project now help the user identify which norm or which standard he wants to use within a particular project. So here I'm going to look at my IEC project under management and under general. There are new two new areas. One is the preferred standard for inserting schematic macros and then preferred standard for generating schematic macros. So this is if you have a macro project. But above here, we specify the standard IEC. So the system, when I take a macro, it'll automatically look at the part, see if it has a macro stored for the IEC standard, and it'll pull that one. If it does not have a macro, it'll always revert back to the old field. So you have 100% compatibility to previous versions, to previous workflow, and if your data currently is set in the standard schematic macro field, that will still be used. But now you have the additional ability to select a particular standard. If we look at our NFPA inch, we go to management, look at general. There you can see that the standard has been set to inch. So you can either set a standard or a company standard, but not both at the same time. So it's up to you to choose whether you're going to follow a particular corporate standard or a particular company or uh, country standard to design your system. But there you have it, that project now carries the value of the standard that you want to use. And now any part you drag, it'll always look at the project, look at the setting defined there, pick the macro from that particular field. And if that's not available, then it will resert to the default. Additionally, in the insert center, you also have, you can see up here in the insert center, you can see the percentage NFPA inch. Meaning that if you decide to go to your window macros, your window macros, if they are defined for a particular standard, you will also have a pre-filtering available here. So it will pre-filter the macros that don't have any value and also the macros that have this particular value associated. So that way you can also, if you're not working with parts and you're just working with circuit macros, you can quickly and easily access the macros that have been defined for that particular standard. So again, international macro management, each part can have up to 10 predefined norm-specific macros. Each part can have up to 10 user-defined company standard macros. So here you have it again, a view on the different fields, and you can label your macros differently. It should be different macros for different standards. Since these different standards use different symbol libraries, it's much easier to manage now by having different macros. Each project manages the norm and the company of the standard to be used. And again, the insert center offers by default the macros associated to that standard. So the standard is set as a pre filter in the insert center. However, also that pre filter is set at the project level. Make sure that the correct setting is chosen. Then we have a new graphics engine. So the new 3D graphic engine really is based off of Direct 3D. So it used to be OpenGL and now we've really changed it over to Direct 3D to take advantage of much better performance in terms of rendering, but also in terms of use of your hardware environment. So if we move over to ePlan, and now we decide to open our 3D control cabinet. For example, here in our sample project, take this three bay enclosure with for switch gear applications with copper bars. And now if I decide to navigate, you'll see that the speed, and again, I just have a laptop with a basic graphics card 
but you notice that the speed has been tremendously enhanced and is really nice whether you're zooming in, whether you're zooming out, the level of detail, the access to the information really makes it fun to work with. So you can manage much larger models and work much quicker in the 3D environment using platform version 2023. So an improvement of 3D rendering using direct 3D, better use of the hardware, so 100% usage of the GPU, the graphical processing unit, allowing you to be much, much faster. Then we have insert center improvements. So the initial release of the insert center, we added certain amount of functionality to consolidate the different insert dialogues. We used to have a dialogue to insert symbols, to insert macros, to insert parts. And instead of having three different dialogues with different functionality, we consolidated everything into one. However, we weren't able to necessarily implement everything we needed to do in the first version 2022. So therefore, we added some improvements in version 2023. And one of these improvements is the new table view with configurable representation. If you have multiple parts that look the same, by clicking on a part, it's always tough to read what the information, detailed information is associated to that part. So we've added a new table view down below, and this table view represents all of the views from above. And if you select a particular view, you quickly can see which all of the detail information associated to that part. So let's go ahead and take a look. Go back to my drawing. And let's go to our insert center. So if in the insert center, I go to my devices, let's navigate to protection devices. For example, I'll select circuit breakers and let's go back here, for example, we've got a few of them. And you, you see that this, the images look all the same. I've got the same part or similar part numbers. But now if I click on the part number, you notice here I'm selecting a particular line. So I can see exactly this is my 10 amp one, this is my 16 amp, this is my 2 amp. But if I click on a line here, 6 amp, it'll highlight it as well up here. So you can easily see it. And then once you selected it, you can just drag and drop it into your drawing and connect it up. This table view is also configurable, so you can right click configure representation. You can add whatever attribute you need to visualize so that you can see the information you need for that particular table view. The same is also true for other aspects. So if I go into my symbols and I look at IEC, electrical engineering protection devices, you can see if I click on a particular symbol, it'll highlight the symbol name, the number, the description. And also if I select on a specific line, I can see the symbol that I need to use and I can easily then drag it into my drawing. And the same is true also for our macros. So if I click on a particular macro, you can see here the name of the macro and a description of the macro as well. So if you have added descriptions to those macros, you can easily read them and access that information right there and then. So a much better improved table view to help access information quicker and easier. Then we have access to the external documents for devices, meaning that we don't have to place the device or go to the parts management to access those documents. Directly in the insert center, you have access to the hyperlinks and you can open any document associated to the selection you have. So again, this goes back to our devices, electrical engineering components, protection devices, and then select my device here and I can right click open hyperlink and access the web pages, the technical documentation, the picture of that specific part. Then we have a new breadcrumb navigation for tags. This you might be familiar with in certain websites when you click on a specific part. For example, you're looking for a car, then you click on the mount of the make, you click on the model, and then you click on the uh, all wheel drive or two wheel drive, and it kind of filters down into your view. Well, we've added this technique to the breadcrumbs or to the tags, so that way you can also better navigate your environment. If we go to our tags, as you can see, I've got a whole bunch of tags here. However, if I click, for example, on circuit breaker, 
Then I click on three pole circuit breaker. Then I click on uh, Alan Bradley, for example, and then here I've got three circuit breaker available. I can also go back and click on three pole and then select, for example, a specific size, four amps. Now you see I have two circuit breakers. So you can really neatly navigate depending on what you're starting with. I want a three pole, I want a two amp, and then automatically only the one from Siemens here is available for that particular selection. So based on how you created your tags, this breadcrumb navigations really makes it easy for the user to access the information needed and to quickly use it in his design environment. So another improvement in terms of navigation capability and accessibility within the insert center. And finally, we've got now specialized search criteria. Before we used to search for a motor or circuit breaker and it would search everything. It would search my favorites, my tags, my devices, my symbols, my macros. Now, if I'm searching for something, typically I kind of know if I'm searching for a symbol, if I'm searching for a device, or if I'm searching for a macro. Well, in this case, you can easily go and say, I'm searching for a circuit breaker, but I'm not searching everywhere. I'm going to search just in my devices. So you can specialize the search associated to that term. And now, as you can see, it goes in the parts management and looks for everything related to circuit breakers. If I'm searching for my motor, for example, MTR, but I'm looking in symbols only, then I can search just my symbol library and it'll pull up all the symbols that have an MTR associated with it or motor, for example. Here are all of the motor symbols associated. So specialized search available in the search box and you can, of course, still search for all of them if you need to. So again, improvements in the insert center in the version 2023 that I will, that I think will benefit the users interacting with the software. Then we have cable management. We have a new cable editor. This new cable editor allows you to visualize the complete cable much easier and much better in terms of understanding what information is there. Previously, our cable editor had two panes. You had the information from the part, you had the information from the schematics, and trying to make, make the information understandable was a bit of a challenge. So now what we've done is we've rendered this visualization of the cable a lot more graphic, meaning that now you have a dialogue, you can visualize the colors of the conductors, whether they're numbered or they actually just have colors. You can see the shields, you can see the pairs, which conductors are kind of paired together. If you have a twisted pair, you can see the source, the target, whether they have ferrules associated with it, and you can completely add and customize the information. You can also visualize the part number and right there. And then if you need to change the part number, you can also do that as well. So if I go to a particular part number, Let's just go to this one. I'll select this cable. We go to our device or connections. We've got our cable section, and here we've got the edit. If I click on edit, there I can see all of the conductors. I see the source of each conductor. I see the wire termination, the gauge. I can see the colors and also a visual representation. And I see visually which of my conductors are shielded and which ones are actually paired, meaning which ones are twisted. If I need to make any changes, I can also access the information here, modify my properties globally for that particular conductor. And I can also up here, look at the part number information. So I can, for example, go into my parts management and select a different cable associated to that. I can modify the length of the cable if needed. So a much easier, dialogue to work with your cables within the platform. Better visualization, better understanding, understanding which one is part of the part and which one is on the schematics. You have that overlay, which is very familiar to the user in the navigators in the platform and very easy to access information. So you can see here also the gray fields and the gray fields, you can directly type in your information if needed and you can make modifications here and there and manage your cable easily and efficiently in the platform.
Then we have wire numbering. So potential specific wires can now be excluded from the wire numbering functionality. And we also added the ground signal transfer. So if you have ground terminals, the ground is connected to the P rail. So normally the potential is the same across all of the P terminals. So if you defined a potential connected to it, now you can easily transfer that potential. So let's look at the wire numbering first. If I highlight these wires particularly, I can go to my enter designation mode. This will allow me to number my wires. If I now select a filter, in the filter you can choose, I don't want to number the PE wires. I can exclude my ground wires from the numbering of my wires. So again, making it easy for the user to control the wire numbering functionality. In terms of um, in terms of ground, here I've got a ground potential. This ground potential I connected it to a ground terminal, and now this ground terminal I placed another two terminals in here. But as you can see, the potential is not transferred. Why? Because if I look at the function definition, these are not ground terminals. So if I switch these to a ground specific terminal, this one and that one, you notice right away the potential from my potential definition point gets carried over and transferred across. There you have it, availability of transferring the potential through our ground terminals is now complete in version 2023. We have also in the wire numbering process, the ability to better control the display of information. So how is the wire designation displayed and which display properties to use? In the wire numbering, you had this display tab where you can configure it, the horizontal view or the vertical view, but now we've added this new use default where you can actually tell the system to not just number the wires, but also use the default property arrangements for your wire numbers. And if we go here, for example, if we go to a particular connection point under display, you can specify exactly how these attributes are displayed. You can also specify that a configuration, for example, this one should be defined as the default. So right now, this is the default. If I wanted to be a conductor, I could actually specify it as the default as well. This default value can now be used within the wire numbering. So if I select my wires, I go to enter designation. Now in the configuration for my wire numbering, on the display, you can check the box here, use default. And that particular arrangement that is set as a default on the connection point will then be used also within the wire numbering process. So making it a lot easier to control the way that you label, the way that you lay out your wire numbers in the wire numbering process. Then in version 2023, we have a new dialogue for our PLC environment. And this dialogue allows us to easily move our sensors from one IO point to another. So it makes the transfer of IO connections between cards much easier. And here we've got a situation, and I'll show you in a second. In this overview, as you can see, I've got kind of a conveyor system. I've got a sensor B1. This sensor B1 is connected currently to my sensor block KF1. I have a sensor B2 right now that's also connected to KF1. But from a physical location, there's also a sensor block KF2 right next to it. So it would be easier to connect B1 to KF1 and B2 to KF2. So the connection just makes sense. However, currently the way it's done, these two sensors are connected to KF1. So if we take a look at my schematics, in my schematics, I got BF, B1 here connected to my sensor block KF1, and I've got my B2 connected to sensor block KF1, just a different plug, X01 and X03. If we look at our overviews, you can see here the two sensor blocks, one with KF1, the B1 connected here, the B2 connected there, and on my KF2, I don't have any connections. So let's just highlight both blocks. Now in the 
device environment, you have this move dialog. And this move dialog gives you all of the selected IOs on the left. So you can see here your KF2, your KF1, your different plugs, XO2, XO3. And on the right hand side, you see where your sensors are connected to. And you can notice here as well, when I select one line, it kind of selects a block. This is the option that we have to edit channel oriented. If I want to just edit the sensor, I can just pick that sensor and transfer it by itself. Or I can choose, I want to edit the channel completely. So now if I click on that sensor, it selects the whole block. Since I just want to work on that particular sensor, I'm going to select my sensor here. And then let's move over to KF2. I want to connect it on plug X01. I want to connect it on my first my first DI, which is this one here. So I'm going to select this one, select the DI. I'm going to select my sensor X2 or B2, and I'm simply going to exchange them. What this is going to do is going to transfer now my connection, and you can see that the connection moved from my X01 here to my X01 on my KF1 card. And that information was also updated in the schematics. So now if I look at the connectivity, this is X01, this is X01, this is KF1, this is KF2. So again, a new dialogue allowing users to shift IOs or sensors from one block to another, making the, making the assignment of the IOs to the IO blocks a lot quicker and a lot easier. We talked about the 3D engine, again, based off of Direct3D, better 3D performance and the rendering, making working with 3D a lot faster and quicker. So there you have it, ladies and gentlemen, a brief and quick overview of all of the news and cool, cool features that are going to be available with the platform version 2023. And from here, I'm going to ask my colleague, Derek, Derek, did we have any questions in the chat that needed to be Yes. Answered? So for the project property overview, is, yes. it, is, it, is it possible to edit what is being shown? Uh, currently, that list is fixed, but we are looking forward to adding that flexibility maybe in the future. Okay. Will there be any changes in downloading a part from the data portal? Since it's now possible to attach multiple macros, will there be an option to download multiple macros of different standards and at the same time, it'll be stored under the same part number? Yes, the idea is to go that direction. So currently the manufacturers, if you look in the data portal, we have two manufacturers for the different standards. So Alan Bradley has an Alan Bradley IEC and Alan Bradley NFPA. Rital has a Rital IEC, Rital NFPA. So currently the manufacturers have a challenging time to manage two sets of data for the different standards where the only difference really is that macro. So the goal is to get the manufacturers to consolidate that information and only have one manufacturer in the data portal. So in the future, you will have Alan Bradley, you'll have Rital. And when you look at that particular part number, you'll be able to see that that part has two or three or four, depending on how many they provide macros available to the user. So you'll always have access to one part number and the information is available. Now, the transition to that aspect, again, depends on the manufacturers. So we are currently in contact with the manufacturers, letting them know that this feature is available in version 2023 and have it helping them to transition to that new feature. So those are things that we need, we are working currently with them and eventually every user will benefit from that advantage and be able to download those parts. Easily. Spot on, thank you. Now, last one, who can participate in the, the beta version? Uh, anyone, anyone who all you have to do is you have to log into the support environment that you have. So using your customer code and your dongle number or your key number or your virtual, it's kind of a virtual dongle now since we don't have any physical dongles anymore, but you still have a key number. If you enter those two values, you have access to the download area in the support. So if you go to the ePlan website, you click on support, you log into your support environment, and there you should see 
the beta version 2023 available for download. So you click on the download, you install it, and with the key you currently have, you should be able to start it and run it as well. And then go ahead and test it and try it out. Try these new functions, try these new features, and give us your feedback and look forward to your input. That's all we have, John. Thank you. Cool. Well, thank you, Derek. And again, thank you very much for your attention. Looking forward to you jumping onto the platform 2023, taking advantage of these new benefits and features and functions and uh, looking forward to hearing from you. From my side, thank you very much. Have a nice day.